to install Eclipse on Windows 10, start by downloading the Eclipse file. In this case, we want to develop Java web applications on a Java web server such as Tomcat. So we're going to download the Eclipse Web Tools project. Most likely you can search for Eclipse WPT and find the Web Tools Platform project for Eclipse. Or you can go to eclipse.org and drill down in the menus from there. The files that you're going to download are going to be zipped into a large zip file and the download may take some time depending on your bandwidth. But under the Web Tools Platform Project, you'll see the downloads directory. So you can click on, click on Downloads and install Eclipse for the Java EE developers. And it's going to have the different plugins needed for Eclipse to help you do the development. For Windows 10, you're looking for the Windows 64-bit. Click on this link and download this file. Once you complete the download, go to the downloads directory and you should see the zip file. In this case, the version is Luna, and depending on when you do your download, that may vary. Notice that this one is for 64-bit. Inside of the zip file is going to be the Eclipse directory. Unzip the file to extract the Eclipse directory. The directory is large and this may take some time. It can even take up to an hour depending on the speed of the computer, especially if you're running on a virtual machine. Once you get the file extracted, go to C Program Files and then copy or cut and paste your extracted ekip clicks directory directly into this path. So be in this case C Program Files Eclipse and inside will be the eClicks executable. To create a shortcut on the desktop, you can right click, say send to, and send to desktop to create the shortcut. When you're done, you should see an Eclipse shortcut. Double click to start the Eclipse project. Before you install Eclipse, it is helpful to install your web server and also be sure that you've already installed your Java development kit prior to installing Eclipse. You can always install your web server such as Tomcat or other web server later but it is helpful to go ahead and install those in advance. You'll definitely need the Java development kit or you'll receive an error from Eclipse saying that it cannot find the Java development kit and cannot start. Once you have the project installed, you can add new software to your web tools. So to do this, come into the available software. So it's under help install software. And then in the work with, click the drop down and look for the Web Tools Platform Repository. Select that repository and you'll get a list of software that can be installed. And there's a subtle difference here, but look for the WTP SDK as opposed to just the WPT. And you'll probably want the latest version. So check off the WTP SDK, whatever the version is that you want. And then you can install those tools. In this case, I've already done the installation earlier. So all the items are checked off as being installed at this time.
but on yours on the fresh install you'll need to click next and then click finish to allow the software to be downloaded and installed. This will take some time usually around 10 or 15 minutes on the average internet connection. When the package is done updating it's going to ask you if you want to restart Eclipse now or later. It's best to just go ahead and, and restart Eclipse now. It doesn't take a very long time and if you don't go ahead and do the restart it's possible that you may receive errors later when you try to for example add your web server into your project. If you encounter errors the most likely cause is that the environment variables are not set correctly for the Java development kit that you installed earlier. To check these, edit your system environment variables, not your local environment variables, and double check that you have the Java home system environment variable set to the path of the Java development kit that you installed. In my case, it's Java underscore home and the value is C program files Java JDK 1866 because that's where I installed my Java development kit, which happens to be version 1866. Once you have the Java underscore home system variable set, you'll probably be okay from that point forward, but it also helps to alter your path. Click on path edit and then put the percent signs around your Java underscore home variable and then add slash JRE slash bin to the end of that. The reason is, is that the bin directory is where the Java runtime environment for your Java development kit is installed. And it's this environment that Eclipse needs to run your projects. The reason I knew that that path is correct is after I installed my Java development kit, I went to the Java directory and verified that the JRE folder, bin folder, contained the Java files and executables that are needed by Eclipse.